I'm going in. Okay, but before I do it, I got to make this quick announcement. Y'all make sure y'all go and uh, if you really like these videos that I'm doing, you appreciate it, you see value in it, go become a patron. Join the movement, become a patron. Go to my patron page. It's uh, patron.com slash Willie D. Patron is spelled P-A-T-R-E-O-N. The link will be in the description. You'll see the link in the description. Also, I got to let y'all know the reason why I started that uh, patron page is because, you know, I've been putting a lot of my videos on YouTube and YouTube has started blocking my ads. So this is a way for me to supplement income to pay my people that are behind the scenes, the people that film for me, the people that do the graphics and all that stuff. And I'm also trying to take it to another level and grow the platform and put other people on. So that's what that's going to be used for. But here's the thing, though, because I saw a couple of broke fools talking and running their mouths. And it's important that y'all know this. Anybody that becomes a patron will receive something. We're going to be giving away rewards. You can get any, anything from depending on uh, how, how, uh, what level you come in on. It might be a gold plaque. Uh, I'm doing some certified lyric t-shirts where I'm putting my lyrics on t-shirts. Um, we have uh, uh, live uh, streaming going on behind the scenes at events with ghetto boys, uh, myself, and uh, other events and stuff that I attend. So uh, it, ain't, it ain't, ain't nothing free. So anybody that become a patron is getting something in return. Fair exchange ain't robbery. You did. So let me get into it. So this dude, Sean Spicer, the press secretary, Donald Trump's press secretary, might I add. And it makes sense because this dude is totally 100% unequivocally incompetent. This dude constantly sticks his foot in his fat mouth. Very arrogant. Every time he's talking, it looks like he's about to bust a blood vessel. I mean, you can just see his high blood pressure going up when you look at him. I mean, the dude is alive. Why? I don't know how the hell. Well, I do know how, you know. Damn near, what, not damn near, everybody in that dude's cabinet is, is unqualified. But I guess he felt like, man, if I can be unqualified and become the president, shit, why can't I have an unqualified press secretary? You know, an un unqualified surgeon general, unqualified this and that and that and that. Everybody's everybody around me, man. This is going to be an unqualified party. So that's the way they did it. Now, it goes like this, y'all. White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer apologized Tuesday after saying Adolf Hitler didn't even sink to using chemical weapons during World War II in an effort to shame Russia's alliance with Syrian President Bashar al-Assad and his use of chemical weapons. The comment was immediately decried and after a series of attempts to clear up his words, Spicer apologized in an exclusive interview with CNN's Wolf Blitzer. I was obviously trying to make a point about the heinous acts that Assad had made against his own people last week, using chemical weapons and gas. Frankly, I mistakenly made an inappropriate and insensitive reference to the Holocaust, for which there is no comparison, Spicer said. And for that, I apologize. It was a mistake to do that. And I won't do it again, because these Jews got me scared as hell. And I'm about to lose my job. And I thought I was the man. I had Donald Trump's blessings. And man, as soon as I ran my mouth about that Holocaust thing, man, I got a thousand calls. And they was talking about beating me up and all kind of stuff. My family was threatened. They hit my wife in the face with a pie. <laughs> That's what he wanted to say. But... Here's the deal. This dude know. He know damn well 
why he apologized. Because he don't like apologizing, even when he's wrong. But see, them Jews came for his ass. And when them Jews come for you, and you ain't standing on conviction, and you flimsy, you weak, you going to fold every time. So they came for him, and he folded, just like the crybaby sucker he is. See, that's who he really is. Now, he said this. He also said this. You had someone who was despicable as Hitler who didn't even sink to using chemical weapons, Spicer said during the briefing. So you have to, if you are Russia, ask yourself, is this the country and regime that you want to align yourself with? You see, the problem with that was that Russia did use chemical weapons. They didn't use them in the battlefield. They used them in concentration camps. So Hitler and his Nazis, they did use chemical weapons. See, that just lets you know. When dudes say, when you hear somebody say something like that, especially somebody on his level of his stature, it just makes you say, man, how in the hell? I was first reminded of when Sarah Palin said that she could see Russia from her backyard. You know, there's some, there's some really stupid-ass people in that conservative party, man. I'm telling you, man. There's some stupid-ass people in that party, man. All they doing... See, it makes it seem like they're smart because they, they're in power. They got a lot of power. They got a lot of juice, and they, they're running a lot of the establishments and stuff like that. So it makes it seem like they're powerful. But what happened is that they got money... And they just learned how to hold on to that money. And money is power. If you have a certain amount of money and you get the structure down and you get indoctrinated into that structure and you stick to the code, you know, you can maintain your little power. And that's what they do. So this dude, the comment that he made uh, had an immediate uh Fall back. I mean, I mean, like the backlash was like crazy. They people came from, from from everywhere, from every angle. He was being attacked from every angle. And then, uh, in a statement, he said, "In no way was I trying to lessen the horrendous nature of the Holocaust." So he kept on trying to clean it up and apologize, but it wasn't working. And he still ain't figured it out because his job is on the line. So they got a lot of Republicans now are calling for his dismissal. They want his job. They want him out of there. And quite frankly, I don't think he's going to be around for another week. I really don't. And when he made the comments about Hitler not using gas agents, I thought to myself about some of the other things that he, he, he said. And I put together a little list. My top three, Sean Spicer, worst moments in press history. This is basically why he lies and he don't know what the hell he's talking about. And you can see a big old C on his forehead for incompetence. Number one, when Paul Manafort took over Trump's campaign last June, Spicer was unequivocal about his role. Paul's in charge, Spicer said, then when he was Republican National Committee's communications director. Indeed, Manafort had already taken control of the campaign, including the budget, hiring decisions, and media strategy. Then in an effort to distance Trump from the man over links to pro-Russian Ukrainians, Spicer said Manafort had very limited role in the campaign for a very limited amount of time. Y'all know somebody like that? I mean, just a sucker. Somebody that stabbed you in the back and just, uh, y'all know anybody like that? Number two, he made the demonstrably false claim that Trump's inauguration audience was the largest audience to witness an inauguration both in person and around the globe. Spicer later apologized, saying he had been given bad information. 
Oh, really? Where is he getting his information from? This is what I want to know because he constantly gets bad information. So I'm trying to figure out where is he getting this information from? You would think somebody on that level would be getting the top intelligence information in the world. Like whatever the top people who can go gather information, you would imagine that he would have access to those people. Somebody, please, tell me I'm wrong. Number three, Spicer again turned heads when he quoted allegations by Fox News legal analyst, you know where this is going, Andrew Napolitano, to insinuate without any evidence that President Obama had used UK intelligence agency GCHQ to spy on Trump. Even after the British government rebuted the allegation, Spicer refused to apologize. I don't think we have anything to regret. We were just passing on news reports. That's what he said. Again, the arrogance. So, this is what I want to know, folks. How much can you trust a spokesperson who don't get his facts straight or a White House that outsources his intelligence to dubious reporting news outlets like Fox. How much can you trust that? Now, this sort of thing was bound to happen when your job is to create the illusion that your incompetent boss knows what he's doing. You can only prop that up for so long, man, before it just fall down. You can only prop it up for so long. Everybody knows this dude don't know what the hell he's doing. And the only people who think he knows what he's doing are some of the dumbest people on the planet. You got to be dumb to think he know what he's doing. With all of these mistakes this man that made, with all the stupid stuff he said, you got to be some a special kind of fool to look at him and say, that's a good leader. Something wrong with you. If you have to defend decisions that are made without forethought and damage control is your default setting, say, man, you're going to see a whole bunch of dumbass, embarrassing things. That's just the way it is. That gap that Spicer made, say, man, that's not incompetence. That's who he really is. No more talk.